Hello, Paul Derwood here. Look, I'm going to show you footage of one of my very favourite films. I came across it in 1973, I think. It was very odd seeing myself portrayed in, in a movie after all these years. But look, look, here we go. Yes, there I am, in 1790. Gracious, I've hardly changed in all that time. Such is the gift of eternal youth, a curious affliction I graciously bear, all because my parents just happened to be vampires. As you know, they both died by the purifying sword of Kronos, a proud captain of the Imperial Guard who so briefly and yet so spectacularly came into my life, changing it forever. And I do mean forever. Since then, I've lived in splendid isolation in my Bavarian mansion. My little sister was unable to stay with me, I'm afraid. And she was never quite the same after my parents' death and for some reason became increasingly scared. Of me, mostly. Um, can't think why. One day she left without warning and I later discovered she married a seafaring Spaniard. Oh well, okay, sirrah, sirrah. Meanwhile, as I put my father's library to rights, I discovered his double-edged passion for English literature and the supernatural. Passions I quickly came to share. Soon I became a collector myself, adding untold numbers of arcane folios to the heaving shelves. Indeed, I took things further and invited the great authors of Britannica to my great house and shared with them the secrets of my library, inspiring them to write new tales of their own. My first guest was that lovely lady Mary Shelley. Interesting girl if a trifle standoffish, perpetually dressed in black, suffered from a stiff neck. She was especially taken with my story of a scientist from Ingolstadt who believed he could resurrect the dead from bits of old corpses. A few years later, Frankenstein was published. I now own the first edition. Signed, of course. Later still, in the 1850s, I received an interesting guest from North America, a Mr. E. A. Pope, who looked rather like a Norwegian troll. Not many laughs, that man. He liked the library, but preferred to discuss the demons that lurked in his own mind. I remember he was especially scared of premature burial. I suggested he write it all down, get it off his chest. Maybe turn them into some short stories? Meanwhile, I lived on into the 1890s, unblemished as ever, well, at least that's what it seemed to me. Around this time, I invited that brilliant young chap from Ireland, Oscar Wilde, for a few long weekends. We had a gay old time, I can tell you, especially the weekends that Bozy swung by. I finally disclosed to him my strange and wonderful secret of long life, which, curiously, he believed straight away. Perhaps it was the sight of my portrait in the library that made the difference, I don't know. Anyway, and so Dorian Gray was born. However, it was my parents' vampirism which fired the imagination of another visitor from Ireland, a gifted young theatrical called Bram Stoker. Terrible beard. Had a habit of hitting the Armagnac the moment my back was turned. But he had an interesting story for me. Apparently, he'd been researching the tale of a medieval aristocrat from Transylvania who got up to all sorts of nasty stuff. I don't know, maybe it was the strength of the brandy, but Stoker somehow got my parental vampires mixed up with the evil kind, and he went off to write a, what he called a, a gothic tale yeah, of his own, um, on the strength of it. I forgot what it was called, but... Uh, I'm sure someone can remind me. A curious chap called H.G. Wells came to see me around the same time, I think. Stuffy old fart. Now, well, I showed him that time travel was indeed possible, but only into the distant future. The Shape of Things to Come, I suggested as a title, but he shrugged off this idea. I'll come up with something better, he snapped sharply. 
Anyway, that's been my life up till now and I'm still enjoying every minute of it. I think those nice Hammer Films people did rather a good job, did you? I do hope they make it. what's it called, uh, oh yes, a sequel, that'd be nice.